Hello, wonderful students. Welcome to chemistry class. And I'm here to show you some few tips on how to pass um, your chemistry, UTME exams, JAM and NECO, and other external examination on chemistry. I want to start with redox reaction. OK. Redox reaction simply means a combination of reduction and oxidation reaction just an acronym, combining reduction and oxidation together that give us the term redox. Now let's start with the reduction. There are many ways of defining reduction. First of all, the addition of hydrogen, the removal of oxygen, the addition of a more electropositive element, the removal of a more electronegative element, and also a condition involving the gain of electrons. All right, so oxidation is the opposite of reduction. Now, this uh, reaction um, occurs complementarily. One cannot take without the other ones coming in. Now, what, are, or what is the meaning of oxidation? This means the addition of oxygen, one, two, the removal of hydrogen, the addition of a more electronegative element, the removal of a more electropositive element, and a condition involving the loss of electrons. Now, the key definition of oxidation is the one that involves loss of electron, which is the last point, a condition involving the loss of electron. All right, so what is an oxidizing agent? We also have various ways of defining them. The first here is electron acceptor. So all oxidizing agents are electron acceptors. There are also substances which is reduced during a redox reaction. And also substances in which oxidation number decreases in the positive direction. We have a few examples of an oxidizing agent, which, is, which includes potassium tetraoxomanganese 7. Then we have potassium heptaoxo dichromate 6. We also have manganese 4 oxide. We have hydrogen peroxide, iron 2 salts, it can be iron 2 chloride. There we have the chlorine gas, oxygen gas. And to add to this, all non-metals are described as oxidizing agents, majorly the group seven elements, otherwise known as the halogens group. OK, reducing agents is also um, the opposite of oxidizing agents. They work hand in hand. Now, why, how can we define this term? One, they are electrons what do not. They are substances which is oxidized. They are substances in which oxidation number increases in the positive direction. And these are the few examples of reducing agents. Hydrogen gas, carbon, carbon two oxide, hydrogen sulfide, sulfur four oxide, potassium iodide, ammonia, iron two salts, sodium, and other metals. Majorly, all metals are known as what? Reducing agents, because they do what? They do not an electron. OK, this is a brief illustration to know how substances are reduced or oxidized. Now, for example, if, if you look at my arrow, my first arrow points the pointed right from minus 1 to minus 3, 2, 0, plus one to plus four shows that an electron is, in what is being lost. Now, element that contains minus four electrons, okay, contain higher electron than what? Element with what? With plus four electrons. Now, if you are going in your positive direction, okay, that means that you are gonna have what? A, an oxidation process in which electrons are being what? Are being lost from minus one to minus two down to what? Plus three. But, Reduction is the other way around, in which you have from plus four down to what? Minus four. That is the opposite. That means that electron that contains plus one means that it lost one electron. When you move down towards zero, it gains extra electron to itself. Then from zero to minus one, it keeps on gaining what electrons. Don't forget that electrons is defined as what? The process in which electrons are what? Are gained. What of oxidation? a process in which electrons are what? Are lost. Now look at this arrow. It's a clear illustration of how electrons are being what? Lost from minus one to plus four. 
and gained from plus 4 to minus 4. Now, these are the few examples that describe this process. For example, chlorine. Chlorine have a total atomic number of 17. This is a normal chlorine symbol, Cl. But when it moves from Cl to Cl minus, that minus means that there's one there's an extra electron gained okay, from a normal chlorine what atom. Now gaining two Cl2 minus means that it has do what? Attracted extra two electrons to itself. Now if you go from 17 to minus one, that is 18, then from minus one to minus to two minus means that there is an extra what two electrons gained by what a chlorine what atom. That means that this process is called what is called reduction process because what there is an increase of what of electron. Chlorine gains electron to itself. Now let's look at iron for example. Moving from iron, 53, sorry, 56 is the atomic number of what of iron. Now when it now moves to what to plus one, that means that it lost one electron from 56 to what 55. One electron is missing from here. That is why you have a plus. Now this is this is a process called oxidation process. A process in which electrons are lost from 56 down to what 53. Plus three means what it lost three electrons from a normal um, ion atom. Okay, these are some examples of redox reaction. First, addition of oxygen. When we are defining um, of defining reduction and oxidation, we define reduction as what? Well, as a process in which electron again, also a process in which there is an addition of what? Of hydrogen and also what? A loss of what? Of oxygen. Now let's look at the first step to see how we can use addition of oxygen to define a redox reaction. Now look at this. We have carbon reacting to zinc 2 oxide. That will give us what? Carbon 2 oxide and a zinc metal. Carbon reacting with two molecules of zinc 2 oxide, giving us carbon 2 oxide, CO, and two atoms or what? Of metal. Now, if you look at from zinc 2 oxide down to zinc, here, zinc has oxygen, ZNO. Okay, but moving from ZNO to ZN, something is missing there. You can see from zinc, zinc oxide to normal zinc. Now, in this case now, there is no word oxygen in our product. So that means that we have lost an atom here, which is oxygen, okay? So this process is known as what? Reduction in terms of what? Oxygen. We define reduction as what? As a process in which what? Oxygen is removed. Now, let's look at the other way around. Now, carbon going to what? Carbon 2 oxide. From carbon to what? A normal carbon 2 oxide. This process means that there is an addition of oxygen atom okay, to carbon atom. See carbon here on its own. Now, in other words, gains what? Oxygen and becomes what? Carbon 2 oxide. So, this process now is known as what? Oxidation. Okay? Addition of oxygen, removal of what? Of oxygen reduction, addition of oxygen, oxidation. Now, um, an agent that gives rise to, to, ox, to reduction is known as what? Oxidizing agents. Now look at two zinc, two molecules of zinc, two oxide to, two, to zinc is a process known as what? Reduction. Now, we have an agent here that allowed what? The reduction to take place. Okay, so that agent is known as what? Oxidizing what? Agents. Now, if you go back to our former slide, we define oxidizing agents as what? Electron what? Acceptor. Electron what? Acceptor. Substance which is reduced. Substance in which oxidation number decreases in what? In the positive what? Direction. Now, going back to that place again, going back to this spot, we notice that here now, is our, our what? Oxidizing agents that enables this process called reduction to take part, making oxygen to what? To loss and give us what? Z as a normal word metal. Okay, let's check the next example. Addition of what? Of a more electronegative element. Now, hydrogen sulfide 
reacting in what with bromine atom give us what hydrogen bromine and what a sulfur atom i take it again hydrogen sulfide reacting in what with bromine atom give us what two molecules of what hydrogen bromide with what a sulfur now from s to s which is what hydrogen sulfide down to normal sulfur is called what oxidation now what gives rise to this process is because of what we have an agent called what releasing agents that enables h to s okay to do what to get rid of what of hydrogen giving us what a normal sulfur what atom now the other way around is what is our reduction from bromine down to what hbr shows that this bromine here the word acts as what as an oxidizing agent that enables what the BR2 to give rise to what? HBR, and this process is called what? Reduction, based on what? Electronegative what? Element addition. Okay. The other way of defining, um, of explaining redox reaction is by what? Removal of hydrogen. Now let's look for example, hydrogen sulfide reacting with chlorine give us what? Two molecules of what? Hydrogen chloride plus what? Sulfur atom. Now, if you look at this, from H to S down to S, something is missing, okay? This is what? Oxidation, loss of hydrogen. So, you can see now, hydrogen here is what? Is removed from H to S, do it, and give rise to what? A normal what? Sulfur atom. So, this process is called what? Oxidation. Now, I'm coming to the, the other half of the equation. This is chlorine atom, okay, as a reactant, all right, giving us HCl in the product. So from Cl2 to what? HCl is called what? Reduction. Don't forget how we define reduction before. Reduction means what? Addition of hydrogen. Now, look at this. Cl now attracts what? One, two atoms of what? Of hydrogen to itself becomes what? HCl. Now, H2S here acts as what? As a releasing agent that enables what? Oxidation to the what? To occur. Why Cl minus do what? Acts as what? Oxidizing agent that enables what? Enables reduction to the what? To take place. Now, this is the major way of defining what? Redox reaction. Electrons transfer. I'm going to explain this using ion 2 chloride. Now, ion 2 chloride reacts with what? With a normal chlorine atom. And give us what? Ion 3 chloride. Please, whenever you are writing a chemical equation, make sure you balance it so that you can be able to uh, ascertain the law of conservation of matter. Now, this is ion 2 chloride reacting with a normal atom of chlorine that gives rise to what? Ion 3 chloride. Now, going by electron transfer, here, ion here carries a charge of plus two. Ion here carries a charge of plus two. Okay. Then from plus two to what? To plus three shows that there is a loss of what? Of electron. Loss of what? Electron. That's why we define oxidation as a process in which electron is lost. So now, ion here, do what? Lost one electron. Okay. And becomes what? Ion three. At that process, there is a reduction that has taken place. Now, Cl minus, sorry, Cl atom give us two FeCl3 from normal zero charge of chlorine to what? To minus one. Now, the charge of chlorine here is minus one. Minus one chlorine, then zero charge of chlorine. So, from zero to minus one, it means that there is an increase in what? In electron. And that process is called what? A reduction word process. Now, what causes this oxidation is known as what? Reducing agent, which is what? FeCl2, known as ion 2 chloride. And also, what causes oxidation um, reduction is called what? Oxidizing agent, which is what? Our Cl2, which is a normal chlorine word atom. So, reduction, gain of electron, oxidation, loss of electron. Okay, so how can we calculate oxidation number in a redox reaction? Now, this is a process. For example, calculate the oxidation number of chromium in potassium, potassium heptaoxo dichromate 6. Potassium heptaoxo 
oxo dichromate 6. Now you will start by the what? Picking it individually. Now the two in front of this shows that we have two atoms of what? Of potassium. These two is what you have here. Two into what? The oxidation number of potassium plus the two from what? From the, from the two atoms of chromium give us these two here. So we have two times what? Oxidation number of chromium. Then the seven from the atoms of oxygen times what? The actual oxidation number of oxygen equals to zero. Now it is equal to zero because this compound is a neutral compound. Eh? There is no charge. That's why we have what? A zero what? A zero equal to zero. Now, what is the oxygen number of potassium? Potassium is a group one element. So it carries what a charge of what? Of group one. Don't forget what you were taught in your periodic table that um, elements are arranged sequentially accordingly on their what? On their, according to their increasing atomic number. So all the elements in group one carries what? A charge of what? Of plus one. All the elements in group two carry the charge of what? Plus two. Group three, plus three. Group four, plus four. Then group five, you subtract five from where? From the noble, from the noble gas, which is eight. So if you subtract five minus eight, you have what? Minus three. If you subtract six minus eight, you have minus two. So all the elements of group six carries a charge of what? Minus two. Elements in group seven carries a charge of what? Of minus one. Then zero is for what? The noble gases. Now look at this. Potassium is in group one. That's why we have what? Plus one as what? As the oxidation number of potassium. We are looking for the, not the charge of chromium. So it's unknown. That's why we say half Cl. Now, oxygen is a member of group six elements. So we have what? Minus two as what? As its what? Oxidation number. So multiplying this true, you have two times plus one, give us plus two. Two times R give us two R. Then seven plus ten minus two give us what? Minus 14 equals to zero. Simplify, we have two CR minus 12. That means that this plus two from minus 14 give us what? Plus 12. You now divide through by what? By two and have what? A plus six. So this is how to do what? To calculate the oxidation number of a compound. Take it one by one. Don't forget to add the atoms while you are calculating the example. Two for potassium, two for chromium, then this seven from where? Oxygen. Now, what is the real Arepac name of this compound? So this compound is named potassium hepta is from seven here. Potassium hepta oxodichromate six. Where is the six? The actual word oxygen number of chromium in the compound. Okay, let's take example two. Calculate the oxidation number of manganese in manganese six oxide or seven oxide ion. Okay, the same process. The same process is applicable here. Oxidation number of manganese plus what? Four times what? Oxidation number of oxygen equals to minus one. Why do we have minus one? That is our point of emphasis. Why minus one? Because this compound is what is an anion. It carries what? A charge of minus one. So assuming there was a minus two here, what happened? Could have dropped the minus two at this point. Okay, so Mn plus four times minus two equals to minus one, give us what? Four times minus two is my, plus four times minus two give us what? Minus eight equals to minus one. Therefore, if you now take life terms, Mn equals to minus one crossover plus eight. So we have minus one plus eight give us what? Plus seven. So the actual name of this compound MnO4 minus is what? Is tetraoxomanganate. Tetra is from where? Four. Tetraoxo is from where? Oxygen. Manganese is from where? From manganese. Then the seven is from you just finished calculating. So we have tetraoxomanganate seven ion because of the charge that it carries. Okay, that takes us to redox half reaction equation. Redox half reaction equation. Now the question might come this way. Split the redox ionic equation and balance it. Don't forget the idea of our reduction, oxidizing agents, reducing agents, and reduction. They work together. 
there is no how reduction will take place without what oxidation. So they are working together. Now let's look at this. Copper 2 ion Cu2 plus plus zinc. Give us what? Zinc 2 plus and a copper atom. Now, copper here carries plus 2. So this is a charge of copper in this reaction. So if I recall the arrow I gave you in a previous slide, where you have from minus 4 to plus 4. And I said that from minus 4 to plus 4 is what? Is loss of electron. Then from plus 4 to minus 4 is what? Gain of electron. So from plus 2 to 0, okay, plus 2 here to 0. Here, copper has what? A charge of 0, a neutral compound with a charge of what? 0. So if copper moves from plus 2 to 0, that means that there is what? There is an increase in the what? In the ions and electron. So this process is called what? Reduction word process. Now, how do you balance it? You balance by what? Adding the number of adding the corresponding number of the charge. Now, this E minus stands for what? Stands for electron. How many electrons am I going to add to my left hand side so that I can have what? The same number of charges in both the reactant and the product. So if I add these two minus on my right hand side, I'm increasing what? The electrons for the copper. Therefore, I must do what? Add my two E minus. These two minus means what? Two electrons. To do what? To cancel out these two charge of atom. So if I add plus two minus two equals to what? Zero. So now we have do what? We have successfully balanced the reduction half equation of this particular what? Reaction. Now this process is called what? Reduction work process because there's a gain of electron from plus two to zero. Now the other way around is from zinc to zinc two plus. Now, zinc is what? It's a neutral atom with a zero charge. Neutral charge. So from zero to plus means that there is a loss of what? Electron. So zero to plus two, zinc loses two electron from its what? Its main atomic number. So how am I going to balance it? I must look for a way so that when I, what, what number I'm gonna, am I going to add and which side so that I can equate the two sides. So I have zinc as zero charge. So I must look for a number. It's, there's no fixed number in balancing chemical equation. It's trial and what and error. So in this case now, you have plus two. So you need extra two electron to add to what? To the right hand side. So that you can do what? You can clear the charges. So plus two minus two equals to what? Zero. So at the right hand side, we have zero, a neutral zinc. Right, right hand side, you have what? Zero. When you subtract what? plus two from where? From the minus two. So this process is called what? Oxidation process. Okay, at this point, we're gonna take a break. We'll be back later.